Okay, here's something random to start the video today, and it is, I'm gonna ask you, who is your favorite rugby player of all time? Let me know in the comments. Mine's gotta be Jonah Lomu. I think if, as a Kiwi, he changed the face of rugby in New Zealand and across the world. He was something that we hadn't seen before, a winger so big and so strong and so fast, and able to dominate games as soon as he got the hand on the ball, and. It was just really exciting to see Jonah play rugby and it was a tragedy that he passed away so young and uh, he'll be someone that we always remember in New Zealand rugby as an absolute legend of the game. So let me know in the comments who your favourite rugby player of all time is today. And welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. I'm a retired Kiwi bloke. I'm a huge rugby fan and I'm living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Australia's performance in this year's rugby championship. That's right, Joe Schmidt took over the Australian Wallabies this year. And uh, I think he's done some pretty good things. So let's see in this video what he has done good and what the Wallabies might be able to do on their northern tour at the end of the year. Well, as I sit amongst my local jungle park here this morning, I'm thinking about the rugby championship a little bit more, and in particular, Australia's performance in this year's competition. Joe Schmidt took over, of course, from Eddie Jones, and there was a lot of media speculation in Australia about how Joe Schmidt was going to do with this Wallabies team. Of course, a young team, a team that had been devastated at last year's Rugby World Cup and really a team that's in the rebuilding phase like many of the other teams in this year's competition. So Australia's Rugby Championship campaign got underway at uh, Suncourt Stadium in Brisbane this year against the South African Springboks. The world champions had come over to Australia after a tied series against Ireland and then a comprehensive win against Portugal in South Africa. And they were probably looking at really going well in Australia. They've always had a tough time against the Wallabies in Brisbane. And they probably want to put that hoodoo out of their minds and get on with starting off the competition in a very good way. On the other hand, Joe Schmidt had only had the team together for a very short period of time. So not only was he coming in a little bit underprepared, he didn't really know what he was going to get from these Australian players. In the first 20 minutes of that first test, I thought the Wallabies did really well. They physicaled up against South Africa. They really took it to them, and it showed as though they were really in for a fight in that competition. But then, unfortunately, their lack of combinations, their lack of defensive work and time together started to pay as South Africa got more and more into the game. And South Africa ended up winning that one quite comfortably in Brisbane. Then they went to Perth, and unfortunately the weather conditions were atrocious for both teams. And again, South Africa just grinded their way again against Australia and came out with a comprehensive win. Joe Schmidt had said at the beginning of the campaign that he was looking for continuous improvement from the Wallabies as they went through the Rugby Championship. He wanted to see a step-by-step -step improvement game from game. And in that game between Brisbane and Perth, I don't really think we saw it. We saw a very lackadaisical Australian defensive line and some combinations not working, particularly in the nine and 10 area. The Australian's kicking strategy was rather poor as well. So there was lots of things for Joe Schmidt to work on before they headed off to Argentina where they take on the Pumas in a two game series back in Argentina. Now, as Joe Schmidt and his crew prepared for those two tests in Argentina, the Argentinians didn't do them any favours because they beat the All Blacks in Wellington in their first game. And whilst they did get beaten comprehensively in the second game at Eden Park, by beating the All Blacks in New Zealand, they would have really believed that they had the metal over top of the Australian Wallabies, particularly back home in Argentina. So it was going to be really interesting to see how that first game went in La Plata in Argentina when the Wallabies turned up for what was round three in this year's rugby championship competition. And once again, the conditions were atrocious in La Plata for this third game in the Australian Wallabies campaign in this year's rugby championship. And it was a very tight affair indeed. Argentina went into the last 10 minutes in the lead of this game and the home crowd was expecting a win from Los Pumas. 
but somehow Australia found a way to win that game in the last five minutes they were camped down in their own 22 they put on multiple phases of play to get down in the Argentinians 22 and they finally got themselves a penalty and Ben Donaldson stood up and took the goal for Australia to give them a one point win in that particular game and to win their first game in this year's rugby championship I really like the determination Australia showed in that particular game. They didn't give it away. Argentina were in the lead. It was a horrendous day weather-wise. And the Argentinian crowd was giving the Wallabies a very hard time. The Wallabies put that aside. They showed maturity. They showed patience. And they showed a determination to win that game and to come back in the 80th minute and slot those three points. So I thought that was a little glimmer of hope for the Wallabies and what might come. So I was really interested to see what was going to happen the following week when the two teams went to Santa Fe and hopefully we would get some dry and good weather for two teams to run the ball because both these teams had expansive plans to run the ball out wide. Well the weather played its part but the Argentinian Los Pumas didn't play their part for the Wallabies and they gave the Wallabies an absolute thumping by putting over 60 points on them. And every time the cameras show Joe Schmidt in the coaching box, it was a forlorn look on his face and rather depressed to think that, wow, have I done the right decision in my career and taking on this job as head coach of the Australian Wallabies. But I tell you what, something I've learnt over the years from watching Joe Schmidt as an operator is the man has a lot of patience, he's very calm, he doesn't give up and he always does a very good job and I thought this is probably just what Australia needed because coming up against the New Zealand All Blacks back in Australia they had time to prepare, get rid of their errors and nobody was going to be thinking that Australia would beat the All Blacks back in Sydney. So with the tag of underdogs as they went into that game in round five of this year's rugby championship the Wallabies had nothing to lose against the All Blacks. And the All Blacks started off very well in this game and started to put comprehensive points on the board. And I think a lot of the crowd probably expected at half time that this game was over, but it wasn't. And we saw that determination, grit and maturity and patience from Australia once again. And they came roaring back in the second half of that game in Sydney. The crowd started to come life in the stadium. There was over 68,000 people watching the Wallabies that weekend, which was a great thing for rugby in Australia as well. Over a million people online viewing the telecast, and it was an absolutely good thing for Joe Schmidt and his team. They got beaten by the All Blacks. They had a chance in the last minute to get it. They didn't quite grab that game, but that game, I feel, was the turning point for this team to really believe that they can do something, particularly at the end of the year on their Northern Tour. So with that very good comprehensive comeback in the second half, everybody was excited for the last game of this year's Rugby Championship. It was going to be played in Wellington in New Zealand, a hoodoo ground for the All Blacks so far over the last couple of years. And with the tail between the legs, everybody thought the Wallabies were going to give the All Blacks a really good go in Wellington. But just like they did against Argentina, the All Blacks felt wounded after that first game in the Bledisloe Cup. They went to Wellington on a mission and they absolutely played out of their skins in the first half to once again give the Wallabies a lot of points to chase. This time we weren't going to see a Wallabies come back in the second half and the All Blacks were able to close out the game and it was a comprehensive win to the All Blacks in that last game in the Rugby Championship. So where does this leave Australia as we get prepared now for the Northern Tour and what can we expect from this team that Joe Schmidt is building? So it's been really interesting watching Joe Schmidt and this team starting to build momentum as a group and you can just tell by when they're spending more time together and Joe Schmidt's able to get them on the training field and actually put a lot of patterns together, they're actually translating that into performance on the field. And if there's one Australian ex-rugby player I listen to, it's Michael Hooper. He's a fantastic knowledge on the game and he's also a brilliant human being. I believe he's right when he says this Australian team has a huge amount of potential. And what I'm really liking is about some of these different positions. I think the front row is going to grow into an awesome front row. We've got Angus Bell in there, we've got Faisler, Matty Faisler, and we've got Taniala Tupo. I think in time these guys are going to be able to take on any front row in world rugby. Just give them more games together and give them more technical training. And I think this is going to be an exceptionally good front row. Angus Bell is great 
in general play. We saw Matty Faisler score a try against the All Blacks in that first game as well. And we all know how big and strong Taniela Tupo is. And if you watch that second game, it was absolutely heroics from him. Staying on the field with a very obvious leg injury and uh, played his guts out for the team. And that's exactly what we want to see from a front rower. In the locking position, there's still a couple of question marks for me. While Nick Frost is good in the lineouts and the scrums, he needs a bit more mongrel him. And I think that's where Solitai Lotto comes in and actually can offer that for the Wallabies. Whether or not Joe Schmidt plays him off the bench is going to be one of those things that he needs to sort out. So it looks like the Australians have got an abundance of loose forwards and that's going to be a fantastic thing as they move forward. They really gave the All Blacks a hard time in that second half of the first test in Sydney. And I suspect the more time that Valentini, Fraser McWright and Harry Wilson play together, I think this is going to be one of the best dynamic trios in world rugby when it comes to loose forwards. It's a competition I'm really looking forward to them taking against the Northern Hemisphere teams when we get up there. Now as far as halfback, we've seen Jake Gordon, Tate McDermott coming in there. We've seen Nick White until he started doing too much of this. And I think the future is going to be with Jake Gordon and Tate McDermott. My preference is Tate McDermott. I just see he brings more energy to the position. Jake Gordon's one of those guys that's more solid. Scored a couple of good tries throughout the campaign. But I just think Tate McDermott's a bit more of a leader for the Aussies. And I think that's what they need on the field at this stage of their evolution. And then we've got to see number 10 that come together. Noah Lolasio's had good games, but he's also had some pretty poor games. And for me, he's kind of in that Damien McKenzie mold. Do we play him or do we not play him? He's got some skill sets, but he doesn't bring them all the time. And when he's under pressure, I don't know whether he's the guy the Wallabies really want to have at number 10. And then moving outside, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Hunter Passami at number 12 and Len Ekitao at 13. I think these two guys can build into a really good centre pairing for the Wallabies. They just need more time and they need to tighten up their defensive work. We saw that go very poorly wrong against Argentina in that second game. And that's something that we did see an improvement on when they came into the series against the All Blacks. On the wings, we've seen Andrew Callaway perform pretty well. We've seen, seen Danganu, who played well in the first games, but got injured, unfortunately. And unfortunately for me, Marika Coring and Betty, his best days are behind him, I think. And I don't think we're going to see too much of him in the Australian Wallaby shirt from going, uh, going on from here. And then at fullback, we've seen Tom Wright. He's one of my breakout players this year. I think he's a fantastic fullback. He's a great rugby player. He can also play on the wing. And I think we're going to see Tom Wright do some wonderful things in this Wallabies jersey. And we already have. He's played very well in a lot of games in the rugby championship campaign. Even when Australia lost, he was in there doing some great work, scoring some tries, and really taking on the counter-defensive work that he's very, very good at. The bench is an area where Australia's done quite well as well. If you remember that first test against the All Blacks, it was in that second half when the bench came on for Australia that they really started to make a difference. So the likes of Joe Slipper, the likes of Alan Alalatoa were coming on. Kalia was coming on as well. And Langi Gleeson is back in this Australian team, which is a great thing as well. So there's a lot of talent on the bench that the Wallabies can bring on. Salakai Lotto was another one that we saw a huge game from against the All Blacks. And I think this is another weapon that Joe Schmidt's going to be able to use on his bench. So I think in the future, the Wallabies bench is going to be something you need to keep your eye on because they are making an impact when they come on the field. So across the board, I think Australia's got the players. What they need now is tough competition. They need to go to this Northern Tour, believing I'd love to see them get a couple of wins up there because I think it'll change the whole dynamic of this Australian team. It will also help their publicity back in Australia, get more people back to the game again. But to see 68,000 people turn up in Sydney to watch them against the All Blacks was a great thing for this game. And also the performance they put in on that day was absolutely critical for Australian rugby. So it's really easy to be critical of coaches, but I'm gonna give Joe Schmidt top marks because I think what he's doing so far and the signs of what we're starting to see from this Australian Wallaby team is really, really good. And I think it's going to take them just a few more games to really get up there with the top teams in world rugby. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some fantastic performances from them on the Northern Tour. 
Of course, it's a different thing altogether touring. So when these guys go up to the Northern Hemisphere for the first time, they've been to Argentina, of course, they've seen what it's like traveling on the road and dealing with all those things that you have to. Well, they're gonna face that again when they go to Europe and the UK in a few weeks time. So it's gonna be another test for them and it's gonna be another opportunity for them to grow as a group. And that's what 2024 for me is all about for Joe Schmidt and this Wallabies team. So I wouldn't be surprised if 2025 is going to be a really good year for the Australian Wallabies again. I think they are going to be competitive against the British and Irish Lions and I can't wait for that tour because I think it's going to show to a lot of people who are doubting the ability of this Wallabies team. I just hope Joe Schmidt can keep all his key players in full fitness, keep them focused on what the game plan is that he wants them to play. And I think in 2025, this Australian Wallabies team can really bounce back and show us what they've got. If they're able to do that next year and finish off this Northern Tour this year with very good performances, then heading into that 2027 Rugby World Cup, being the host of that Rugby World Cup, it's going to bring a lot of people back into the game. It's going to get a lot of people in Australia excited about rugby, and it's going to give them a good chance to go very deep into the tournament. Now I know there's a lot of naysayers who are going to watch this video and tell me that the Australian Wallabies are written off, that rugby's dying in Australia and blah blah blah. Well I disagree with you. I think Joe Schmidt, if anybody can turn this team around, it's Joe Schmidt. I've got a lot of admiration for this guy. I think he's got a very intelligent rugby brain. He knows exactly what he wants to do with this group. He showed loyalty to the players. And as a result of that, we're starting to see glimpses of performances. Yes, we haven't seen a full 80 minutes yet, but I tell you what, I think we're gonna see it on the Northern Tour. And if that's the case, he knows exactly what he needs to do against the teams he's gonna play. And that's another thing Joe Schmidt brings to this game. So take the emotion away from it. I think this Australian Wallabies is a very good building phase. I think they've got the players with the skill sets to be able to go on and compete at the highest levels again. And I tell you what, my prediction is by the end of 2025, we're gonna see the Australians in the top six of world rugby again, knocking on the door of the top five. That's my prediction. Now, of course, it wasn't the rugby championship this year that Joe Schmidt was probably hoping for. Just to win one game was pretty disappointing in terms of results, but I think he saw enough things on the field to answer a lot of the questions that he had about these players. Now remember, Joe Schmidt's in that position where he's starting off with a brand new group of players almost, and he's trying to bring those through to world-class levels. And as we know, that takes a little bit of time, and of course rugby fans are the most impatient breed of humans on the planet along with rugby union associations and federations. So I think Joe Schmidt will be given the time because I think he's shown enough. He's a clever man. He's got a good rugby brain on him. And I think we're going to see good things from this Australian Wallabies team. OK, so there we go. That's my summary of Australia's performance in this year's 2024 Rugby Championship. Let me know in the comments what you saw with this Australian team. Are you one of the people that are writing off the Wallabies next year and they're not going to have any chance against the British Irons? Or did you see enough like I did to think that there's a glimmer of hope here that this Australian team can really be a force to reckon with over the next couple of years under the tutelage of Joe Schmidt? Let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to know. Okay, well, there we go. That's the third in the series that I'm making about each of the teams in this year's Rugby Championship. Tomorrow, I'll be back with my review on the South African Springboks, the last team of this year's Rugby Championship that I'll be doing a review on. So make sure you come back and check that out. And here are five ways in which you can help support my channel. As I said at the beginning, I'm just a retired bloke that's got this hobby of making videos on YouTube about rugby because I'm extremely passionate about the game and I want to play a small role during my retirement in trying to help the game grow across the world. So if you can help me out with any of these things that I've got on the screen in front of you now, I would be truly grateful to all of you. Okay, well that's it for today's video. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe, stay well everyone. I wish you a fantastic day. Keep enjoying your rugby across the world. And it's time to say adios from beautiful Cancun in Mexico. Until tomorrow, it's bye for now.